What's up? What's good? Matt Clark here at the new Matt Clark. How are each and every one of you doing on this amazing Wednesday? I'm doing great. My girl's doing great. My family's doing great. I hope each and every one of you are doing great. Even though we're in the midst of another lockdown, it's chaotic. You already know how it is. If you could please hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that bell notification button to get all my videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that would be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link's in the description of all of my videos. So what up, what up, what up, what up? Feels like it's been a minute. Uh, you know, just been kind of busy. Life kind of gets in the way sometimes. And, uh, you know, I just wanted to jump on here, let you guys know I haven't forgot about you. We're going to be getting back to doing videos and getting back onto interviews and stuff. Life has just been really hectic lately. And, uh, you know, I'm still working on getting that new laptop. As soon as I do that, I'll be able to just do better content, more content, and that's the goal. So what up? What do you guys want to talk about today? JH, what's up? Jules, what's up? Ake, what up? Edge. <laughs> I used to be a big-time wrestling fan, actually. At one point. Bilal, man, what's up? Yo, 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 yo. What are you guys up to today? What's the word? Trapping daily. Don't feel guilty, brother. At the end of the day, it is what it is. You know, like, we're already at different times. And if you just beat yourself up every time you use... It's just going to become a perpetual cycle of you beating yourself up and then using to make yourself feel better. At the end of the day, it is what it is. And, uh, you know, just move on from it. And every day, take it day by day by day. And hopefully you can break past that. WCW, you already know. Jules, making money daily, bro. You already know, man. I, that's awesome. Glad to finally get some decent weather in Ontario. That's what I'm saying. I saw the weather. It's talking about 20 degrees, 20 degrees, 20 degrees, 20 de degrees. Sunny, sunny, sunny. So you already know. Chad, what's up? What are you saying, man? How do I feel about Doug Ford and the lockdowns? You know, at the end of the day, I don't think it really matters who it is. When you give somebody that much authority... It takes a special person to not take advantage of it. And we have so many people in your ears telling you to do these things politically. You know, I don't know. Uh, I can't say because I'm not in his shoes. He's a conservative government. Um, I don't know. You know, I don't hate Doug Ford. I just don't really understand the lockdowns at this point. Um, for me, it just really kind of... Uh, extends the inevitable. I know you want to kind of hide everybody out till everybody's vaccinated, but people should have the choice. Uh, that's just how I feel, but let's not talk about that too much. For us tonight, don't put those plants out yet. Yeah, to me, every politician's a goof at the end of the day, you know? They all they all carry ideals and ideology, and everything is just talking points. You know, it's rare that you get a politician that actually means what they say and stands by what they said, you know. I'm sure he probably does. Politics is a dirty game, you already know. But it's a popularity contest, right? Because people are tribal. So at the end of the day, everybody wants to be part of a team. Everybody wants to be part of something. And that's why everything is the way it is now. And social media and the media just perpetuates that division, you know? And uh, I don't know. I don't spend too much time on social media these days because of it. It just pollutes your mind, you know, and, you know, who knows what's true, who knows what's not, you know, you try to 
take a little bit of everything and be objective, but you know. Jail story. Best beat down I ever saw. I don't know, man. I've seen so many, but for the last large portion of my life, there wasn't too many beatdowns. I will say there was a bad beatdown, and I did a video about it. Um, but the, that was probably the worst beatdown that I saw. It was a big jack dude, okay? Guy's huge, probably 240 pounds, but he's short. And, you know, he was accused of being a box thief and stuff. And he didn't, you know, he didn't appreciate that very much. And before people could really talk and people could really figure things out, it escalated really quickly. He got jumped by a bunch of guys. And, man, he got beaten and stabbed so badly. Uh, you know, I saw somebody get killed as well. But I'd say the best fight I ever saw and I say the best fight I ever saw was in my high school. Honestly, the best fight I saw was in my high school between this Vietnamese dude and this white guy right in the hallway of my high school, just went toe to toe. And because these two guys were prepared to fight and nobody was prepared to jump in or break it up, it kind of just went. Coyote Prophet, man, what's up? Gary Cullen, you already know, Jerry Cullen. You already know, man, go Leafs, go. The worst thing you have seen put in the jug up. The worst thing I've seen is a big turd in the juice. And uh, I never, ever drank that jug juice. Yeah. If you ever worked in a kitchen in a prison and you clean those jugs out and the calcium, the cal like the flaked up old juice crystals and crap that sticks into those jugs and flakes out into ugh. Not into it. Implants are, are good, man. Honestly, there's not much left. There's maybe just that little, see that? Little bump. And if you see, actually, you could probably see it. You see there? You see that sticking out? There it is right there. But honestly, I feel good, man. I feel good, and I love the fact that I don't have to wake up and worry about taking a pill. It's great. I went to a high school in Aurora called G.W. Williams. Hate on the Leafs all you want. I'm a true Leaf fan at the end of the day. I respect that, but we'll see what happens playoff time. In the dawn, they would fight over that juice. I, I never understood it. I never understood it. I definitely feel normal. I actually feel more normal than I did taking the pills. Exercise routine. I just, honestly, I was a calisthenics dude. So I used to do lots of pull-ups, lots of push-ups, lots of dips, weighted dips, weighted pull-ups. And I used to hit the bag a lot. But I would also work out and mix in workouts, whether in the detention center with bag workouts and stuff like that, or on the street in a gym, or in the federal prison system in a gym. I never liked burpees. I always had skinny legs because I was lazy. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying, Chad? Not having to wake up and worry about taking a pill, man. I'm telling you. What advice do you have for the tall, skinny, skinny, fat, fr skinny, tat-free white boy who might end up in the pen? Just be yourself. Try to be funny. People like funny. But don't try to be funny before you know people. And at the end of the day, just be yourself. You know, don't go in there trying to be tough if you're not. People are respected a lot more if you're just authentic and say that you're not. You know what I mean? I know I got to get with the burpees. <laughs> yeah, get some tattoos. Yeah, just be yourself. You know, don't walk in there like you got a chip on your shoulder. 
Um, you know, the only place where you might have to actually kind of act that way is in Max, but you wouldn't be in Max unless you went through your whole bit kind of acting a fool, unless you were a killer, a lifer, which in that, you know, instance, you'd have a different mindset anyway. So you get what I'm saying. Trap it. Tattoos, no. No, because there's lots of dudes that don't want tattoos that are just as gangster as dudes covered in tattoos. And believe me, you see some dudes that are just head-to-toe gang tats, and they come from out of province because they're running. Because they thought it was cool to get the tattoos and join the gang and get all the perks of that until the gang actually went to war, and then they ran. That's why you got to be yourself. That's why you just got to be honest from the start and just say to people, I'm not that guy, you know? 100%. If you just want to do your time, that's not saying that you'll never bump heads with somebody, you'll never get in a fight or whatever, but don't get caught up in somebody else's politics just for their respect. And don't beg friends. Don't beg friends. The laptop situation, I'm working on it. We're getting there. No, I haven't done anything on the Windsor place because I, I never did time there. So, Dylan Carter, what's up? Awesome channel. Just moved from BC to the GC. Thinking of moving. To yeah, I've been to Uxbridge for sure. But. Thank you for appreciate the support with the channel. GTA is definitely whack. I got a bad batch of dope yesterday. It got me high, but gave me hot flashes and anxiety. I went back today hoping for a new batch, but it was the same shit in a different bag. And <laughs> it means don't go anymore. Nice. Shy town gorilla man, I'm happy for you. If you could just keep doing that. I've never been to Spring Hill. I've I definitely did an interview with a guy that's been to Spring Hill. A medium security penitentiary. The problem with the GTA. When I lived there, it was too expensive, you know? Paying crazy. I mean, anywhere in southern Ontario is expensive, but being directly in the GTA is out of control. Fight the good fight, brother. At the end of the day, it's not about perfection. It's about progress. And, you know, when you're in hardcore active addiction every day, that is your priority over your family, over your relationships, over anything. So that's what you focus on. And if you can just switch that focus onto something positive, you know, you have to go through that divorce. You have to break yourself from that grip first somehow, whether it's going to treatment, like you said, you're on methadone, but you got to, you got to break the cycle and separate yourself from it for a bit. So you don't have those same crazy temptations. And then just day by day, work as hard as you can being a better person. The next day you'll be a better person. Yeah, 80 grams of methadone will, will carry you through most. You know, you might feel a little shaky if you're doing a lot. But if you just keep going day by day, you already know. And thanks, Chad. I appreciate that. And JH. JH's been here for sure. For a long time. I appreciate each and every one of you. And if you guys could just go up to the top. Hit that like button. You already know how much that means to the channel. It helps a lot. And I appreciate it every time. You just go up to the top and hit that like button. You already know, my 
And Shy Town Gorilla, be good, brother. Tia Hustle is hard for good life. That's what I'm saying. If you just put the same energy that you do every day into finding dope, because when you're a dope head, people always say that drug addicts have no willpower. When really, they have the ultimate will. They need something every single day, and they go get it. They treat it as it's imp as it, it sorry they treat it as it's important as say their kid they put that much focus into putting food into their own stomach but it's not food it's drugs but that is ultimate willpower because every day you will succeed if you're in that frame of mind if you put that same energy into positivity you can't fail maybe you'll stumble through a couple things but at the end of the day, people will start recognizing that will and reward you for it. Nobody's going to reward somebody or give opportunity to somebody that they look at as lazy, that they look at as dysfunctional. So you have to you have to create your value. And the only way to do that is by working hard. Kyle, what's up? Dark times. Yo, man, how many push-ups did you do a day when you were locked up? It depends, man. There was a there was a point in time where I was doing 6,000 push-ups every week. You know, but after I got my shoulder surgery, it went down maybe 3,500 a week. So I do maybe eight 800 a day, depending. Sometimes I do it all at once. Sometimes I'd split it up into two times. <laughs> Hey, to quit this shit, you got to make yourself shit. Same as smoking cigarettes, mate. That's the thing. See, I can't quit smoking cigarettes because I don't hate it yet. I almost hate it, but not quite. I don't. I do know Millbrook, but I never did time there. I know it's an old bucket and, you know, that's what we got to do. You're, you already know there, Sarah. Trap and don't be me, man. Dark Times is a supporter. You already know. It's true. Nothing would stop me from the next fit except the holding cell. And the same drive allowed me to face my bullshit and change my life. That's what I'm saying. So for me, because I'm a knucklehead, definitely don't learn anything really quick. You know, even though I'm intelligent, it's like I like to test. You know, I want to push the boundaries. I want to live against the grain. That's how I, that's how my brain always was. I was nomadic. I just kind of wanted to, to be on the move. And because of that, I couldn't follow any rules growing up. I couldn't follow any rules once I started getting parole and probation and all that stuff, which led me on the run and blah, blah, blah. And in, until I got sick of that, it never stopped. Joanne, thank you very much. I am doing well. Thank you for the 10 piece. Everybody shout out Joanne, a supporter of this channel. Thank you very much. Quit after 17 years. Cigarettes been sec 16 months smoke-free. Wasn't easy. No slip-ups. I don't feel like you can kind of, like, I stopped believing that you can just kind of, like, wean yourself off cigarettes. I don't think it's possible. I think you just got to nip it in the butt. I guess some people, they don't have as strong of an addictive personality as I do. But me, I'm all in. Anything I do, all in. You know what I mean? So even though I don't really like smoking, I just pound back cigarettes like it's health food. Uh, I don't get it. But every one just makes me go, ugh, ugh. But I still do it. That's the addictive personality. And that's why I knew that I had to cut off everybody I knew that was using or doing drugs. I can't be around it. I can't see it. I have to fortify myself first before I can even consider stepping out and putting myself in any risky situations. But at the end of the day, you know, years later, strong shell, like I feel definitely like I'm strong. I just don't have any interest in even being around the people that I was around before because I've changed like deep in my soul. I'm a different person. I genuinely feel that. 
Hey, Matt, let's say somebody is going to a tough prison for 10 years and has one month to prepare. What should they do? I'd say you should start training before you get there. If you know you're going, get yourself in as good physical shape as you can before you get there because you never know. And the worst thing to do in a fight is gas. Most people can't fight, but if you gas out, you put yourself in danger. So do that. If you can quit smoking, do that. If you can stop using drugs, do that. You don't want to go in skinny and weak. And other than that, I'd just say, you know, do as much research as you can on the prison that you're going to. Understand the environment you're going into. You'll never just start there. You'll always go through some kind of a reception center and you'll kind of build up to that. You'll start in provincial, even if just for 15 days, say you're out on a bail or 20 days, and then you'll go down to the pen and then you'll go through a reception process and stuff. So eventually you'll build up to that. And uh, I, I would just say at the end of the day, just keep it real. Don't fake the funk. And that's one time you don't fake it till you make it. You know what I mean? Yeah, and definitely get stuff together. If you know you're doing 10 years, remember, you, you get a pen pack, so you get clothes. You get up to $1,500 worth of personal property that you can have. You need a flat screen TV, which are really hard to find in that size and not because they can't be smart. So you got to be able to find like a 19-inch dumbass TV. And uh, yeah, you can take nicotine gum. I know you can buy nicotine gum. I know that. And the funny thing about smoking is I struggle crazy with quitting smoking. But every single time I've been arrested since 2008, there's no smoking in that jail. And knowing that doesn't bother me. As soon as I'm in, arrested in the back of that cop car, don't think about smoking again until I smell the smoke of tobacco. It's crazy how the addiction works. Yeah, once you quit for a year, it's easy. I feel that way about cocaine. You know, maybe not for everybody, but for me, because I was never like a, a lover of cocaine. I just kind of did it because I was an addict, especially towards the end of my using years. And, uh, now that I've been away from it, I have zero temptation to use it. I don't know if they hand out patches for free. I'm sure you'd have to buy them. You'd probably have to go through some stupid process to get them. I did time in Storyville. What is your brother's name on the Lifers Range 3A? Well, that's, you know, I'm not going to scream out my brother's name on the channel. <laughs> but if you were there, you'd know my brother. After y'all quit, you feel like you can't, you can breathe better. Yeah, you definitely do feel like you can breathe better. For sure, 100%. And it doesn't happen right away. You go through a process where you're kind of coughing up phlegm and stuff. But within six months, you feel a lot better. Yeah, they're about that here now, too. They just raise them crazy. Cigarette-shaped e-smoke. Huh. I haven't even thought about that. I found the euphoric recall of cocaine the hardest one to overcome. Smack was easier to overcome for me. Yeah, I get that because everybody has a different addiction, you know. I I had a true love for heroin. I never had that same deep passion for cocaine. I could take it or leave it. You know, I, sure, there was times where I got caught up in the cocaine because I wasn't doing heroin. But once I started doing heroin, even if I went through a patch where I was off heroin and just doing coke, as soon as you threw a bag of heroin at me, I'd forget about the coke for the most part. Uh, 
I'm telling you, everybody I used to roll with who didn't get out of it at, in time is dead or just not the same person. Hood stories. What's up, my? Yeah, I can get I can get a carton for fifty bucks if I go to the res. Chad, you already know, my. Have a good day, brother. I'm on here for like another five minutes. So if anybody's got any grand questions before I go, and if you could please go up and just hit that button right there, right there, that like button. I'd appreciate that. You already know, Jaren. Jerry, keep it up. I did the same thing. There's a term for it. I think substitutions can be wrong, though. You already know. I watched Alan Carr's five minute YouTube video and quit right after that. I've never seen that video. Yeah, see, this is the thing, JH. Actually, see my, my implant video? It got totally demonetized and rated 18 plus. How's that? J unit is still open, but it's not J unit, if that's if that makes sense. See, there was a time where J unit was the the maximum security population in Ontario. Now that's Collins Bay. Collins Bay. J unit now is protective custody. You know, you hear different stories. Guys will say that there's ranges in the Haven that are population, and there's ranges that aren't. I'm sure that there probably are ranges where the guys are population. It's just guys that maybe have incompatibles wrote against wrote against them, and blah 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 blah. But J unit no longer exists as J unit. I don't know if it's PC per se, all of it, but you have two maximum security. Okay. So if you go through maximum security reception and you have no incompatibles, you have no concerns at all. You have no beef with nobody. You're going to Collins Bay. You're not going to Millhaven. Now, there's a lot of guys that are in Millhaven that are not PC. That is facts. But they have what they have done is they have accepted their fate because they don't want to go out of province. Say somebody gets stabbed, bang, in J unit. They're not a PC because they got stabbed. But they won't let them go back into that jail. So it's either they go to Millhaven or they go to kent british columbia where they might not be able to see their family so that's why it's not pc but if you are a new guy who has no beef in the system you have no problems on your name you're going to collins bay just is what it is yeah the implant video shut down Edwards, I don't ask him to come on the show. He gave me a huge opportunity to go on his show. I'm a much smaller platform. I don't expect him to do that. I just appreciate the opportunity he had to get let me come on his channel. So I don't even ask, to be honest. Jesse, man, you should come on for the interview. Chronic Carl. It's like an administrative unit, not PC. Yeah, I know that there that not every range in Millhaven is PC. I know that. But you got administrative segregation and super duper 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 guys, PC guys in Millhaven. Okay. You also have just regular PC. Then you have guys that aren't PC but can't go to Collins Bay. If you're if you're a fully population guy and have never had any beef, you're not going to ask to go to Millhaven. You're just not. I'm just being real. I'm not disrespecting anybody who's in Millhaven cuz I know there's a lot of people there that aren't bad people. I understand, but that's just the way it's just the way the C, the system works now in Ontario.
and threatened me to leave my building at Rinston. <laughs> <laughs> oh no that sucks brother yeah so let's see what happens yeah that's crazy that guy deserved to be rinsed He's lucky you didn't do worse. You can get involuntarily transferred out of the province, but it's rare, you know. Um, I would definitely say if you've worn out your welcome, there's a lot of time where guys are just savages. They just, they can't be anywhere. They just fight, 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 fight. They get shipped out of province. They'll go to the shoe. Sometimes they'll get shipped to a different max, like Renus or whatever, because they've just had enough of them here in Ontario. But for the most part, they're going to keep you in the province. You got arrested. If you have family and your life somewhere else, at the end of your sentence, they'll fly you back and you'll touch road. And not necessarily just people that are skin beefs and rats and stuff. There's a lot of people that are misled even by the COs to go into protective custody. And there's a lot of people that are in protective custody for the wrong reasons. You know, these are good people that are just scared and not really prepared for getting attacked by a bunch of people. And then they get run into PC. Now, they're basically civilians. They get a one, two charges. Maybe they get like a DUI or something, but that's different, you know. Skin beefs. Bro, if you put someone down as incompatible in the day, it was another way to check in. You already know. For sure, you can't write nobody as an incompatible. It's still, it's still a rat move if you ask me if you put somebody on as an incompatible. I had multiple incompatibles that people wrote me and I didn't even beef people like that. There's people that are just fucked up and they don't want to go to a prison. So they know your name. So they throw you under the bus. There's people that are shady like that. <laughs> Probably Chomo. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Master Blunt. I feel for you, brother. Hopefully it all works out, my friend. How do I feel like the prison experience would be too Hispanic? If you're in the city, you're good. Actually, I think you're good because Hispanics, for the most part, get along with white boys. They get along with black guys and they get along with native guys. So most of the time, Spanish guys are good. As long as you don't have like weird charges and stuff like that. But you guys already know, man. I appreciate you guys for coming to the live. I just want to say what's up. Have a great night. What percentage of inmates do I think are mentally ill? I say at least 50-50. Not mentally ill, but have mental health problems. Love each and every one of you. You already know, Mike.